How would you like to add double the detail to your Celtic knots with only a tiny bit more work? Today I'll show you an easy technique that you can do to add extra detail and pizzazz to your Celtic knots with only a little extra work. Coming right up. I'm Carrie Buziak of Aeon Celtic Art. I'm a published author and a Celtic artist teaching modern techniques and ancient art. I've been teaching these techniques for the last 25 years from my website as well as in my book Creating Celtic Knotwork by Dover Publications. Before we get started today, remember to subscribe to my channel and ring that little bell so you're kept up to date on all new tutorials when they come out. Today I'm going to show you how to do split weaving or split weave knotting. This is totally my name for it, this is nothing official, but you see the actual technique used in many of the ancient Celtic manuscripts like the Book of Kells or the Book of Duro. Today we'll be using the Aeon Celtic dot paper, so I'll include a link for that below down in the comments. You just head over to my website and download a copy of that and grab a pencil and eraser and away we go. So I'm going to create a rather basic knot here for me to show you these examples on. I'm going to do a five big dot by five big dot gridded square with a plus shape in the middle that goes from three big dots to three big dots. I'm going to start with one of the little gray dots. Again, it doesn't matter which one I pick. I'm going to pick that top uppermost left one there and I'm going to put my tipped over tic-tac-toe board. I add that same tipped over tic-tac-toe board to all the other small dots within the boundary box, making sure not to add it to the ones that are crossed off by the green lines in the middle or the ones crossed off by the bounding box on that outside edge. Next, I connect my corners. I'm going to start with that top left corner there and just connect those lines to each other. Once I'm done that, I'll add the other corners as well. Next, I'll connect the bends and elbows along that outside edge, starting with that top left one and then adding the rest until they're completely joined, including the corners that meet in the center in our plus shape. The theory of split weaving is essentially we're going to take one knotwork strand and divide it up into two. So you see here, I'm only going to do those kind of loop rings on the diagonal just to keep things simple for our first example here. So the red line divides each angular loop into two thinner strands from one big one. When you haven't split all the strands in a knot, I find the easiest place to start for your weaving is one of the wider intersections. So you see here, I'm going to start with that top one. I erase a pair of those inner lines to give it the appearance of going over that knot strand below it. Following the red arrow, I continue to weave my knot. So if that one wasn't over, then when we reach that loop that we divided in two, that first thin strand it's going to go under, and then the other thin strand it'll go over. I keep following that strand around, treating each of those divided thinner strips the same as I would a normal thick strip and keeping the same over under over under pattern through the knot. I've reached the end of that first loop and I'm back where I began, but I still have unwoven intersections. I'll start from that upper middle intersection again, the arrow showing the direction I'll be erasing this time. So if this strand is leaving that intersection with the red arrow as an under, when it reaches that first split intersection, that will be an over, and then an under, and continuing on until it's finished. So you can see in the finished design, we have our thinner angular loops going through the thicker, bigger loops. We can make a variation of this knot as well by leaving the angular loops alone and instead splitting those larger loops. I'm not gonna go through the example on that one. I think you can figure it out from that first bit that we did. So I'm gonna move on to the next idea. So we don't have to divide the entire length of a knotwork line. Here you see I've added those red dividing lines only to part of those angular loops. Like before, I'm going to begin my weaving on an undivided intersection. Here I'm going to make that go over, and following the path of the red arrow there, the next will be an under, then an over, then an under, until you've woven all the intersections and the knot is complete. By choosing to split the entire strand or only portions of it, you're able to control how much detail you're adding to the design. 
You can make a variation on this idea as well, where the dividing line isn't a single skinny line, but instead has a thickness. So you're creating kind of a gap as you weave the over and unders in your design. So I'll start with that same intersection again and follow the arrow, erasing under, over, under, over, until the whole design is woven. And of course, instead of choosing just some of the lines to split, you can split all of them and you end up with this crazy beast. When you're splitting a lot of strands, I really recommend doing the follow the red arrow idea where you pick one strand and go over, under, over, under until that whole strand is woven and then move on to another strand and go from there. And that'll help you not get lost in the design and keep your over under pattern going smoothly. I like to do a variation on this design where I keep all my intersections split, but then I rejoin at like the corners and the elbows. And I think it gives a really neat kind of balanced design that way where you have the extra detail at all the intersections, but still some planar parts so you can see the pattern overall. Keep in mind that once you've finished your one knot work portion, you can always join those up to make a larger, more complex piece. So going back to this design, I can duplicate it to make four, and then using my joining knot techniques that we covered in the other video, I can connect them in the center or at any other point where they come in contact with each other. Here I've just done it in the center so you can see. I've made a worksheet again this week. You can feel free to use this or create your own designs and practice splitting different portions of it and see how you can use this technique of kind of creating instant detail in your own work. So as you can see, these knots start off much the same as all our other knots do. It's the addition of that bisecting line either through the whole knot or in parts of it that adds the extra detail. There is a bit more work that you have to do in the weaving side of things, but you know, compared to what you're getting out of it, I think it's just a little bit extra work and you're doubling the amount of detail or fanciness to the end design. As we saw in the video, those knots can then be recombined together to make larger panels if you use the techniques that I covered in the joining Celtic knots videos. Again, if you run into to trouble in this, please just leave a remark in the comments below and I'll try to answer as best I can. And before you go, don't forget, subscribe to my channel and ring that little bell so you're kept up to date on all new tutorials when they come out. If you'd like to support me or my channel, please consider becoming a patron. You can support me for as little as a dollar a month or two dollars a month, and it gives you extra perks like access to all my online tutorials at once, free high-res clip art, and all sorts of other goodies. These and many more techniques are covered in my book, Creating Celtic Knotwork by Dover Publications available through amazon.com as well as in your neighborhood bookstores. That's all I have for this week for you guys. Bye!